Let's continue our discussions about introduction to statistics, definitions, and terminologies. Now we're going to talk about more about variables. What are discrete variables? First, discrete variables are quantitative variables that can assume whole numbers, integers, like for example the number of chairs in the classroom or a number of people at a party. What are continuous variables? Continuous variables are also quantitative variables, but they can assume any value in any given interval, such as room temperature, how long it takes to drive from point A to point B, how long does it take to take a test. Let's look at a couple of examples. We want to identify the discrete or continuous variable. The number of correct answers that Sarah got on this test, since we can count how many correct answers, that would be discrete. But how long it took Sarah to finish the exam, that would be length of time, and length of time is considered to be a continuous variable. What are level of measurements? When we collect data, we have to be aware of measurements of some characteristics, such as heights, weights, colors, level of pain, scores on the exam, how many correct answers, those kind of things. And there are different level of measurements. Some common level of measurements are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So let's uh, visit nominal scale. What is a nominal level of measurement? We use it for qualitative data that deals with names, categories. Nominals cannot be ordered. And there is no calculation done with them. They're like names. Some examples, color of eyes, yes or no responses, a jersey number, a license plate number. Those are examples of nominal data. What about ordinal scale? Ordinal scale are nominal data type that can be ordered. such as grades that are assigned at the end of a semester, those are considered ordinal. You can order them. The top 10 cities in the United States, you can order them. The movie rating that are released, you can order them. So those are called ordinal scale. The next one is interval scale. In interval scale are ordinal data type that we can perform addition and subtraction operations on them, and those operations are meaningful. A room temperature, a range for grading policy, the race time on sporting events, those are good examples of interval scale. Now, ratio scale are like interval scale, but we can also divide one value by another value. And the ratio is meaningful, and in addition to that, it has a natural starting point. The income salaries, the natural zero would be no salary at all. And if someone makes $2,000 versus someone else that makes $10,000, 
we can perform division that shows a ratio between the two incomes. The years of working experience, again, that one has a natural starting point, which is zero. The heights of athletes in different sports. These are some examples of ratio scales. So how are we going to collect sample? That brings us to sampling method. Sampling method is a strategy on how to select a sample from within a general population. Of course, we don't want this process to be biased. Some common sampling methods are simple random sampling, convenience sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. Let's review this. So what's the simple random sampling? When every member of the population has the same chance of being selected as part of the sampling, that would be simple random sampling. So for example, if you toss a coin 1,000 times and record the number of tails, so those are, you know, it's considered simple random sampling. If you assign 1 to 50 to 50 different students and then select a number, any one of those numbers could have been selected. They had equal chance of being selected. Therefore, that would be simple random sampling. Convenience sampling. It's a sample drawn, but there is no well-defined method in the process. And the easiest way to look at it is when it's an easy access. For example, you, ta you ask a neighbor what they think about certain news or certain issue. Or just in a classroom, you ask your classmates that is sitting next to you that if they have a smartphone or not, if they have a calculator or not, or if they are a fan of certain team or not. So these are convenience sampling. Systematic sampling, that's another method. Systematic will be when we decide, we start at the random point, and then we take every kth item. So for example, you can ask every tenth person a certain question. So in this example, every tenth caller to a customer service line is asked to participate in a survey. Or in the assembly line, you want to inspect every 25th item to see if that item works or not. And you can use this for quality control. So those are systematic sampling. Stratified sampling. Stratified sampling is when we divide the population into groups that share the same characteristic. And then we randomly select from each group. So let's say, for example, in this hospital, in this example, they divide the patients into males and females, and then, then randomly select 10 patients from each group to do a survey. Another one that we all can relate to is students are classified as freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. So university uses this, and then from each group, they select, let's say, 25 students to conduct a survey. So this is an example of stratified. And our last sampling method is cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is very similar to a stratified. You divide into groups. You select some of the groups, but then every 
item, every member of the selected groups will be chosen for the survey. So this is called cluster sampling. So for example, let's say math department wants to know something about, you know, the performance of the classes. So if you consider each section to be a cluster, we have close to 200 sections. So let's say they select 10 sections, and then they distribute the survey students for all the sections. So these are some examples of cluster sampling. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, presentation and uh, be prepared to, pro you know, to ask questions in class and go over some of these materials.